Mumbai, a fast running city full of variety. Worldwide, it is known as the Sapnoki Nagri, the city of dreams. Here, the day begins at 4 a.m. People here are always on the run, reaching the bus stop on time and trying to jump in the crowd, hanging at the door, running from one platform of the station to the other just to try and catch a train. They risk their lives to reach their destinations on time because even if they call it a city of dreams, they have a real hard time with their boss. Conclusion is that a large amount of people travel from one end of the city to the other just to reach their dreams and earn their bread. Well, bread tastes good, but it is considered to be unhealthy. And such is exactly the problem of the Mumbai city. More than Mumbai cars, you will find here the Mumbai junkies. Junk food is the third lifeline of Mumbai. It has become as good as a staple food of the city. A person might get fed up of going on to his job, but he will never forget to have his regular dose of junk food throughout the day. Very few of Mumbai's population have become health conscious these days because of the health awareness advertisements. Every person in Mumbai has a different perception about junk food. For few it is unhealthy, while some say that it is good because it is tasty and is easily available when you are on the run. Junk food is an informal term given to some foods which are considered to have little or no nutritional value or to products with nutritional value but which also have ingredients considered unhealthy when regularly taken in or to those considered unhealthy to consume at all. Foods more likely to be considered junk food generally are those that are more convenient and easy to obtain in a ready-to-eat form. Junk food is a cultural definition applied to food made outside the home that often is widely considered to taste good, in many cases to children and teenagers, or to adults who have developed a taste for the food since childhood. Factors contributing to labeling as junk food are high levels of refined sugar, wheat flour, trans fat and saturated fat, sodium or salt, and additives such as preservatives and coloring agents. Others include lack of proteins, vitamins, fiber, and other nutrients popularly considered part of healthy diet. What influences people to have junk food may be confusing and includes elements of class snobbery, sense of taste, cultural factors, and moral judgment. Junk food is like something which is uh, being made on the streets, basically. That is what my idea. Junk right. food is good, I mean, it, is, it has its both good and bad effects. Uh, it's a fast food so you don't have to actually wait when you have to catch up with food or when you are hungry and you don't have time to eat. So, it's good. Mumbai and its food trends, whenever I think about that, one thing which comes to my mind is vada pav. Because I feel vada pav is a kind of a quick snack which people can just, you know, uh, they get on the road and just they can have it. It's a fast life. People don't have time to go in a restaurant, have nice lunch, have nice breakfast also. People don't get time to have even breakfast in the morning. Vada pav is the best option they can have. Hello. The availability of junk food stalls on every street makes it harder to resist the temptation of feeding on vada pav, samosas, pav bhaji, pani puri, bhel puri, sandwiches, frankies, pizzas and burgers. The many convenience stores for ice cream, chocolate bars and potato chips do not make it any easier. All in all, the temptation to eat the wrong kind of edibles is everywhere. When we speak of street food, the fact that it's cooked in unhealthy conditions makes it unhealthier than the same food made at home. Coming to the latter, fast food is a kind of food item which can be made and served quickly. A meal with relatively low preparation time can be considered as fast food. So junk food, irrespective of where it is made, is on the basis of how much value it contains in terms of nutrients that we get to decide what junk food is. Moreover, junk food, apart from adding up empty calories, also causes harm to the eater. The biggest irony regarding junk food is the fact 
that it's mostly prepared out of the healthy food. And many items coming within this periphery of the term, vegetables are used as the main ingredients. Consider a pizza loaded with a thick vegetable topping. The junk factor comes from the cheese sprinkled over the vegetables. Even though cheese is good for health, an excess of it is not recommended. And of course, the pizza base made out of refined flour does contain empty calories. Now, the burger, which is a favorite of a majority of junkies, contains an oily tikki and vegetables like lettuce, cabbage and tomato, sandwiched between the two buns. Although tikki is what we usually consider as a type of side meal or a starter, what makes the burger junk is the refined flour that's used to make the buns and the oodles of mayonnaise and butter added to the filling so that the three layers stick to one another even while eating. Coming to Mumbaian junk food, locally called chaat. These mostly include the very famous samosas, kachoris, panipuris and cutlets. These are fried items with various fillings within an outer layer made of refined flour. Even Chinese food sold in roadside stalls is junk food because they contain a high amount of monosodium glutamate, MSG, which is a flavor enhancer. MSG is recognized as a health hazard if taken in large quantities. There is one section of the society which actually challenges the definition of junk food. If a person's body is deficient in fats or carbohydrates, then this supposed junk food would actually nourish his body. Of course, there is no doubt the food items that are high in fat, sugar or salt are unhealthy. But again, what applies to one individual may not apply to another. And people need to apply some common sense and decide for themselves what is right for them and what's not. It has been proven that high fat or sugar foods do lead to obesity, increase in cholesterol, high blood pressure and eventually cardiac problems such as angina. And even after knowing this, they go for it either because they want to have a quick bite or they love the taste or maybe they want to eat something different from the usually boring homemade food. One thing is taste. I like the taste of junk food. I mean, uh, you see uh, pizzas, burgers and everything. And uh, second thing is, it's uh, like I told you, it's a fast food. So it doesn't consume time when you have to, you are very hungry and you don't have time. I personally like junk food. Mm -hmm. But I know it is not good. But uh, I think majority people like it because of the, uh, the taste the value, the food value, what it, I mean not the nutritious value, the presentation, the taste and everything, that's why I think people go for junk food. So I personally, I like to eat junk food but I know that it's not good so I try to avoid it. Yeah, I maybe there are, there are various reasons for that like if some people they don't carry uh, tiffins and all so maybe it's a kind of compulsion for them to eat such kind of a food. Some people are used to it, some people get addicted to it after eating continuously and all. So there might be various reasons, it's like depends from person to person basically. But yes, it is true. How much ever a person living here tries to get used to carrying a tiffin of homemade food, it is not possible for the maximum of them. In the case of students, they complain that the lecture timings are not convenient enough that they can carry specific food to have on proper time. Office going youngsters have already got used to the junk food trend because of their college days and hence they cannot think of anything else other than the office canteen or the food outlets near the offices. Same as in the case with the maximum office going men. Even if their wives are ready to cook their lunch, still they prefer the canteen food. They say that it is hard for them to carry things with them while traveling in crowded trains. In such situations, the famous Dabawalas of Mumbai are a great help. Instead of going home for lunch or paying for a meal in a cafe, many office goers have a cooked meal sent either from their home or sometimes from a caterer who delivers it to them, essentially cooking and delivering the meal in lunch boxes and then having the lunch boxes collected and resent the next day. This is usually done for a monthly fee. 
The meal is cooked in the morning and sent in lunch boxes carried by the Dabawalas who have a complex association and hierarchy across the city. We can say that for those who consider carrying a tiffin while traveling, either by bus or train, is inconvenient. Applying for this Dabawala service is a very good option. In a manner, at least they will consume some healthy food. Definitely it is wise enough to carry your tiffin. Of course, I'm a student, so definitely my mom tells me to take Dabbas. Initially, I used to think, what is this, yeah, Dabba? And when you're in that stage, when you know your college just starts, you think the, carrying a Dabba is damn boring and uh, you can go in the canteen, just chill and eat uh, outside food. And when you look in the mirror and you come to know your size is increasing, you just stop eating and you just, the craze for that food gradually decreases as you go to degree college and you know, when your work also increases, anytime the regular chapati, bhaji and dal roti, uh, dal rice is the best. Carrying a tiffin is like, it's about taste or it's about your mood. If you want to eat your home cooked food, you can, uh, like you carry your tiffin, your dabba with you. But you have not interest or no, you have pretty much options. So you don't go for tiffin, I guess. You go for your junk food. We are roaming from here to Burgli to uh, Harbour and the many places are there. We have a, like, you know, we have samples and all. So we don't have a time to carry the food with us. So that, that is the basically reason. So when we get the time, we get, like, you know, this is junk food. It's, uh, uh, I think, uh, all the, like, you know, 80 of the PR, 80 percent of the people are like you know eating junk food because of they don't get the time and the things. Another good idea will be fresh fruits. They are not only nutritious but also tasty. Oranges, sweet limes, bananas, apples, grapes, pieces of watermelon, papaya, and pineapples are the best of the fruits one can prefer to carry and they are easily available so that people can buy fruits on their way and have them during lunch. Junk food is a drawback mainly among youngsters and small children who are highly attracted towards chocolates and ice creams. Small children love eating them the most. It seems to be their need and addiction. The main problems created by the excess consumption of chocolates are stomach aches, toothaches, obesity and dizziness. It also leads to lack of concentration in many manners. Youngsters go for chocolates all the time when they feel hungry because the chocolate makes you feel contented after a hungry sensation. Ice creams cause a problem mainly because of the level of sugar in it. Ice creams create teeth problems as well. Still one cannot control himself when he sees the attractive colors of the ice cream and the wrappers of the chocolates. Finally, we can say that the busy life of Mumbai has molded the Mumbai cars to be the Mumbai junkies. Still, many people are consulting dietitians and doctors for their problems. The irony is that many of them still eat junk food and to reduce their fats, they start practicing yoga or working out. Before thinking of managing the diet, a Mumbai car should think of managing his time. Unless and until he doesn't learn to manage his time, he will not learn to manage his diet. People here are known for running with the time, but few more efforts will prove to be a boon. After all, it is the Mumbai car who keeps the Mumbai running. Trains. 